Okay, at this point, you have probably watched the prep video, and you know we're going to be doing torsion, and we're going to be doing torsion on three different samples here. We have a solid, a hollow, and an open sample in here. I want to talk about these samples here real quick, and I'm going to kind of fish one out here. Uh, the things I want to point out is we have them labeled, and they have hexes on each side. The hexes are timed fairly close to being the same, so we can take them in and out and be interchangeable. We have a strain gauge on here. Now, that strain gauge is but really, really delicate. So we don't want to damage this. We want to be careful of how we deal with that. But I want you to be able to see that there's a grid on there. And we talked about that in our prep video. And we have two wires. And basically, there are two wires that are attached to one side. They're black and white. And another one is red. That means there's three wires in here. We're going to see as to why those three wires are needed for a white, black, and red when we talk about hooking it up to the test indicator. But basically, there's only really two connections on the gauge itself. We're just coming off this and bridging off of that on that side. We're going to be connecting in a quarter bridge assignment. Now, I know this isn't a strengths lab. In strengths labs, you guys are going to learn all about strain gauges, how to hook them up, how to deal with the different configurations, and be real intense. We're just going to do enough to hook this up, utilize this, and capture some data from it in this lab. So all three samples have been made and we've got good installs on these strain gauges and we're going to be hooking those up to a test indicator here in a minute. Now then, we talked about uh, the samples. Let's talk about how we're going to test those samples. We're going to utilize this wonderful test stand right here. And this test stand is going to allow us to hold this end solid, turn this wheel, and put a torque, a twist on that part and we're going to be able to measure the strain using that strain gauge. And that's the basics of what we're going to do with this lab. Yes, we have a strain gauge mounted on this end of this machine. That's for other labs in, in different courses. And this machine can do a variety of torque and twisting uh, labs. So we're just interested in angle of twist, strain, and calculating torque values from that. So what I want to point out on this side is this side is fairly stationary. If I try and twist it, putting a force on it coming down this way, it's really solid. If I twist it the other way, you're going to see all this move because basically this is a pivoting section. It's coming at a torque arm at some distance and we're locking it up right here. So we want to put our torque, our twist, going in this direction right here. So if I'm looking at this direction here, it would be a counterclockwise uh, torque being applied on there. So this is all set up for us correctly. We've got it matched up here at the top where the lines match up at the top side up here and that's going to be stationary. The one other movement that this has is it will slide back and forth to allow changes in the length of the part as we put strain on it. On this half of the machine over here we have a lever down here that if you turn it clockwise it will lock this up and it will not slide. If I unlock that I can come in here and slide this whole unit as a whole on the machine. We're going to need to be able to do that. And then when we get ready to test, we'll just come in there and kind of snug it up. You don't have to torque it down or anything. Now, it's real tempting for a lot of students to come in here and just start turning this black lever wheel. What that's going to do is turn some neat numbers up here. It's going to be fun to spin the wheel. But let's don't do that because right now it's pretty much time to be set at zero, 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 fairly close. And what that does is sets the the orientation of these two spindles where they're clocked about the right time. And so this has a flat. Imagine it going over to this side and it's flat and that's going to be perfect for what we need because again we're going to be putting our samples in here and we're going to be timing them off these hex. Now we're going to talk more about that once we get them hooked up to the test indicator and how we verify that they're indicated in correctly. So that's going to take us to the point of introducing this unit. It is a P3 strain indicator unit and we're just going to go over the basics of how to use this for this lab. This thing will do a lot more stuff than what we're going to do. Uh, some things I want to point out about this is up here we have what we call a quarter bridge connection. This tells us how we're going to wire to these different channels. There's one, two, three, four channels on this. So we could actually run four samples. We're just running three. So one, two, and three is what we're going to hook to. And it tells us how we're going to connect to these. Now, this little drawing right here shows a strain indicator right above the T and it shows a wire coming off here going to this P positive. We're going to take that P positive and we're going to put that to be our red wire. If the red wire connects to the strain indicator on the other side we have two wires. Again that's that black and white wire that we talked about. We're going to take the white wire and come up to the S minus connection, the second one in line here. The black wire is going to go here and there's three that are dash that are hidden type lines here. 
We're going to take it to the first one, the D120. That's a 120 ohm uh, resistor or strain gauge. That's the resistance of that strain gauge. As that strain gauge is pulled longer, it's going to get skinnier, increasing the resistance, and we're going to be able to measure that. Now, if it gets compressed, it is going to get shorter. It's going to allow less resistance, and we're going to be able to measure that as well. So it's kind of like an ohm meter, if you want to think about that. We can measure that in micro strain. Okay, what we're going to do now is talk about how to use this. I've hooked up all three channels. Channel one is going to be solid. Channel two is going to be the hollow section, and channel three is going to be my open section. Now, what I've done is prop this up where I can get the screen to show up here. And we're going to turn this unit on by hitting power. And it's booting up. And it's showing that we have three channels on. Channel four would be right here. So these are channel one, two, and three. And this button right here, we'll kind of go through some of the options here, shows the different channels and which ones are active. Channel four is inactive because we're not using it. So I would want to have active, 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 and inactive. Hit menu, that's gonna be okay. If I was on channel and I didn't have the correct one on, I could actually cursor over and we'll turn it active or inactive by the cursor arrows. Again, you can close out with menu. The next one we want to hit is bridge. This is going to tell us what kind of connections we're going to have. We're using a quarter bridge for all three channels. Well, all four of these don't currently show quarter. If I didn't, I can cursor through the arrows and get it to quarter and like I want it to be hooked up. Again, once they're all quarter, I can come in here and finish that out. So what we want to do next is hit K. And K is going to take us to the screen that's going to let us adjust for the different uh, units we want to measure, as well as the strain gauge factors for the strain gauges. So let's look up here. If I cursor up here, I have channel, and I can change from channel 1 to 2 to 3, and I can see the different channels happening there. I'm going to go to channel 1, and I'm going to come down on channel 1. I'm going to look at the units, and I want to be on micro strain. Again, if I change that, you're going to see my menus change. I want to go till I get to micro strain, and that's good. I want to cursor down to gauge factor and gauge factor is what the gauge manufacturer tells us this is going to be for this gauge and for the gauges that we have installed here they're going to measure 2.04 so we need to have that number typed in for all three strain gauges here that came out of the same packet and so we have these settings correct and once we get them all set for all the channels okay so I would want to go up here and verify that channel one two and three all have those same settings I can hit menu and now they're set. So this unit is now set up for all three samples. Okay, I wanted to move the unit back behind the machine so that when I'm doing the testing, you can see it. In the lab, you may just leave it back over here to the right of the machine. That way somebody can get in there and, and read the values real easy. I just wanted this so I can capture the sample and everything I'm doing at the same time with the screen of the unit back there. It's your choice if you wanna leave it back there or not. What I'm going to do is leave all three samples laying on the table down here with no loads on them. Okay, We've connected them. We've learned that we got all the settings correct in the machine. The only thing I need to do now is zero these out. It's kind of like that scale that you're going to get onto in the bathroom or even the samples that you're going to take over here. You're going to tear it out and zero out the scale and then weigh something. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to come in here and hit balance right here and we're going to hit it again and we're not touching the samples. It is zeroing out the samples, and it says we want to save this. We're going to hit the little record up here, okay, and hit it again. It's saving the setup, and right now, all these samples should be reading zeros. That means there's connections, and they're all zeroed out. If I grab a sample, and I put some torque on it, I can tell that I've got the solid sample, because that's channel number one, and I put some torque on it and I'm twisting it and I can see some strain being developed on that sample. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I've got my sample and I'm gonna bring my solid sample in here and I'm going to load that sample. You can see the hex here and I'm gonna tighten that up pretty good with the screwdriver in this hole right here. The next thing I wanna do is come in and slide this tailstock up onto the sample. You may have to kind of push it to kind of guide it in there and it's gonna slide perfect. You may have to adjust this ever so slightly as well to get it where it fits on there. Now, this is close to where the sample is and I'm ready to tighten it. Now, when I tighten that, it may twist that sample one way or another. That's okay, we know that's gonna happen. So I'm gonna come in here and tighten this up. And when I tighten it, I do have some micro strain. I have some twist on there. So I'm gonna come in here and turn this wheel 
clockwise and see if that strain increases or decreases. And as I turn it, it is increasing. So what I want to do is take that back to zero. Okay, there is about zero. I'm going to call it, if I can get down to one or two micro strains, I'm going to call that zero. So right now we're at about zero. I don't need to rebalance it because we balanced it outside of the machine. What I'm going to do is reach back here on this wheel back here. There's a nut and I can loosen that and I can turn this wheel then. And if I turn it to zero and I tighten this up, basically that is now going to let me see the angle of twist in degrees. Now, how much are we going to do? We talked about a maximum amount of six degrees that we're going to put on this. So we're only going to twist it six degrees for all three samples. We don't want to go past six. If you go past six, you may break one of the samples and then that means you get a zero for the lab assignment. So be sure you're paying attention to how much twist you're going to put on these samples. So here's at zero degrees. Now, what do each of these lines mean? One revolution on this back wheel back here is going to represent six degrees. So we don't want to go more than one revolution. If I see here, I've got a 0.5, that's going to be basically uh, half a degree. Here's one, that's going to be one degree. So your lab sheet's going to have how many degrees you need to go to. So I'm going to turn it where you can see it turning back there to whatever degree I have. So I'm going to go to about one and a half degree here. And when I do, I can see I have some strain on that. If I had a different amount, maybe I had two and a half degrees, for example, I now have even more strain being applied to that sample. So I'm going to go to the six degrees as I go incrementally stopping and recording the strain that I have on my lab sheet. And when I get done, I'm going to bring it back down to zero, relieving the strain on that sample. Okay. And then I'm going to take this out of the machine. And what that's going to do is let me take and test the next sample. And I'm going to go probably from channel one being the solid, channel two being the hollow, doing the hollow sample, and then doing channel three, the open section last. And we're going to go to our lab sheets and enter all that data in there and do our write-ups. Hope that helps out.